Joshua Wiseman is a chef with a popular YouTube channel. About half a year ago, he released a new series called The Cheaper, where he cooks various tasty looking dishes at extremely affordable prices. An all-American breakfast for $2, sushi rolls for a dollar, and a bowl of fried rice for a dollar. In each video, he cooks the dish and tallies up the cost of the ingredients. The totals for these restaurant quality dishes is always a fraction of typical restaurant quality prices. This is all very appealing, but the accounting is incomplete. In economics, there's a concept called the opportunity cost, and it's the value of the best alternative for gone in making any choice. Consider this example from the excellent folks at Planet Money. You're a high school student who's ready to graduate. What's the cost of going to college? It's not just the cost of the tuition, the books, the dorm room, and the meal plan. It also includes the amount of money you could have earned during the time you were in school. That's the opportunity cost. Let's consider the cost of cooking fried rice versus getting takeout for a week for me. I'm a university student in Toronto living in a shared rental unit near Chinatown. All prices will be in Canadian dollars. Since I'm not Josh, my fried rice will be slightly worse than the stuff I could get at a restaurant. I grabbed a couple of takeout menus from several Chinese restaurants close by. Their fried rice costs around $13, or $16 after taxes. It takes me 15 minutes to pick up the food on my way home. The total cost in time and money is $112 in two hours per week. For cooking at home, we'll break down the cost for groceries, food prep, cooking, and cleanup. I'll do one grocery run every week. Fortunately, my closest grocery store is only 15 minutes away. If it takes 30 minutes to find all the ingredients, then getting groceries will take an hour. Josh estimates that the groceries will cost $20 if we were to pick up everything from scratch, so we can assume that we have some stuff in the pantry and say that groceries cost $7 and an hour of work. Next, I need to process the food. To save some time, I'd probably cut the carrots and scallions in advance, cook a big batch of rice, and prepare a large batch of the sauce. Let's say the initial preparation takes two hours, then every day, I only spend 5 minutes on prep. Cooking the fried rice is another quick 15 minutes. After eating, I need to clean up. Since my rental is an old one, there's no dishwasher, so hand washing the dishes will take another 10 minutes per day. Thus, it takes me 30 minutes to start with a completely clean kitchen and end where we started. In total, we can round down to say that's $7 and 6 hours of work per week. Minimum wage in Toronto is $14. The cost per serving to buy fried rice is $20. The cost per serving to cook the rice at home is $13. Note that this is much more than the $1 claimed by the video, even after exchange rates. But it's still cheaper than eating out every day. Are we done? No, there's a caveat. I'm a grad student working as a TA. Our hourly wage is $40 an hour. Thus, the cost per serving of the fried rice for me is $35. How much time can I spend on cooking per week if I want to achieve $20 per serving? Accounting for the inevitable hour to get groceries, the only way for this to work is if I meal prep all seven servings in two and a half hours, just enough time to watch the Avengers. This is not just a Josh issue. There are many videos with recipes costing less than a dollar per serving, living on a couple of dollars a day, or incredibly affordable grocery hauls in expensive cities. But hopefully now you see that the price of the ingredients is small potatoes compared to the opportunity cost of cooking at home. Implicit in the claim that the fried rice costs a dollar is the assumption that the viewer sees cooking as a hobby. Time spent cooking is time well spent. But this need not be the case for everyone. In reality, I do meal prep, but it takes me closer to five hours every week. By my calculations, I'm losing money, but I don't mind. I value cooking as a skill, though I don't always enjoy it. Chopping onions is a pain, my kitchen has very little counter space, and it's generally unpleasant to work in it. Still, the best way to maintain any skill is with practice. The time I spend cooking doesn't all go to waste, though, as it is a great opportunity for me to catch up on podcasts. But for the people I know who don't enjoy cooking, their decision to eat out often makes sense. The above calculations only make sense for a single person living in a big city where groceries are plentiful. It is a very different calculation if you have a family, don't have easy access to fresh produce, live on a farm, operate a family restaurant, are unemployed, have dietary restrictions, or have a significant other who is a chef. Ross probably took many hours to cook the bowl of rice in his video, but he has more than 1 million views on it, so the rice probably paid for itself. Your rice and mine won't be so valuable. Instead, we should all strive to check the calculation for ourselves. What matters is figuring out what you like doing and trying to optimize your time so you get the most opportunities to do it. 
They may or may not be cooking. In the end, I got some takeout and made some fried rice of my own. My verdict? It's fried rice. It may not cost a dollar, but it's still very tasty.